Welcome back to my channel everybody, Shri Tips here. And today what I have planned is I'm gonna use the uh, lion sugar method to refine some pure silver from these forks. These forks are made of sterling silver. Sterling silver is an alloy of about 90% silver and 10% copper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dissolve these forks in some Ruto professional drain cleaner that I bought at Ace Hardware. It's 93% concentrated sulfuric acid. And we're gonna dissolve the forks and then we're gonna get out, rinse all the copper out of the forks. And then we're gonna use lye and sugar to uh, precipitate out the uh, pure silver from the silver chloride that we're gonna produce when we add some hydrochloric acid. Now this is a remake of a uh, previous video that I did, but it was very sloppy in my first video and the yield was very low. Uh, less than half of the actual silver content is what I recovered in my last video, but we're gonna try to get it up very close to uh, a decent yield uh, so that we can uh, produce some pure silver, three nines fine. Throughout history, the ratio between gold and silver has been roughly 20 to one. What that means, it takes about 20 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. But recently, gold has risen to a point where it was almost 120 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. Gold has been uh, rising in value relative to the dollar uh, faster than silver. And so now that ratio is down to about, uh, I think 80, 85 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. And uh, eventually I believe that silver is gonna catch up. See, gold went like this and silver didn't. It's just kind of meandering right here. But silver is more attractive to folks with, that don't have a lot of money to invest, but want to participate in the gains in the precious metals. So what I think is gonna happen is as gold's gonna continue to go up, but silver's gonna go up faster until we get to that ratio of roughly uh, about 20 to one, 20 silver to one troy ounce of gold. Okay, no more, no more philosophizing, theorizing, and fantasizing. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna get out here and we're gonna process these silver forks into some investment grade pure silver bars. Here we go. We're gonna start this out by taking uh, one of our forks here. And I'm gonna cut it into pieces if I can with these cutters. kind of score a mark and then you can break it in two. It's best to cut this thing up into pieces before we get started. Ah, let's see here. Should be able to get away with three. What I have here is a, a rolling machine. It's got two steel rollers with a crank. What we do here is I've got those pieces cut up and we uh, see how the rollers open up or you can close them down so we find a place where this will fit in there and then we just run it through them steel rollers until we get the piece nice and flat. I bought this rolling machine for other purposes, but I figured I might as well use it for this video. I had to uh, drill some holes in my workbench there and mount it because you can't uh, hold that thing down while you're cranking it. Got to put a, quite a bit of force on it to get uh, the metal rolled thin. And uh, Hoax Book says to roll the metal thin and the longer you spend here at the rollers, the less time you'll spend at the acids. So that's why I'm rolling the metal thin here.
this process took way longer than I thought it was going to take. And it was a lot more difficult to crank that thing and get that uh, piece of silver flattened out. It tended to uh, get longer rather than spread out sideways. But the goal here is to get it thin so that the acids can dissolve it quickly. Normally that uh, rolling machine is kept inside away from the work area. And if you notice, I left it out in the shop a couple days and the rollers have turned. That's due to the acid fumes that are generated from the reactions that I do out there. So uh, that's why those rollers are a different color. And you're gonna have to explain that once I come out and see that. That's what happened. The senior chief left his nice shiny rollers out in the fumes and they got rusty. I'm going to be dissolving these in some sulfuric acid. Here's the one spoon, the three pieces that I cut from it, and it's uh flattened out pretty thin so the acid can get to it just increase the surface area I'm gonna do a fork without thinning it out here you can see right there it says sterling that's how we identify if we have the proper material if it doesn't say sterling on it the chances are it's probably not sterling silver but probably going to be silver plated which is a uh, coating of silver over brass i've got two small beakers back here 600 milliliter and i'm going to try to do this experiment with these two forks in those two small beakers so i need to cut this these strips of metal up so that, that they'll fit down in the bottom of the beaker that I've selected is off now. This is so that we can get them in the beaker. All right, now I'm going to take this. I want to do the experiment both ways to show you what the difference is between having your metal rolled out and having the uh, fork solid like it is. If I can bend this into a little coil so that I can fit it down inside the beaker. Should do it. That'll fit, yeah, that'll fit down inside the beaker. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna get some flamage on these uh, pieces of silver here, sterling silver, and incinerate. Here we go, we're gonna take these pieces so that they don't lay flat. Just twist them a little bit so they don't lay flat down on the bottom of the uh, beaker there. Give them a little twist. Right, the next step is to burn each of these pieces. Any oil or grease that might be on here, just heat them to redness. And we'll set them aside and let them cool. Each piece has got to be heated like this. I could have heated these before I cut them up. And it uh, would have been a lot easier, but uh, it's just another example. Goes to show you, I'm doing this for the first time. I mean, I've already done a, a refining on this ahead of time to make sure it was going to work all right. But, the first time I've done two in a row like this, or two side by side, I should say. So, uh, you're watching me learn it as I go, as usual. And I'm just heating this up now to redness so that uh, 
you don't get any kind of grease or oil or any other kind of contamination in the reaction when I put it in the uh, drain cleaner to dissolve it. And again, I'm doing uh, two different experiments side by side here. I'm going to use a whole fork like this rolled up without being uh, flattened out on the rollers just in case folks want to try this and you don't have a roller. So we'll that, let that cool off now over here. Beaker number one. 600 milliliter beaker. Put it up on the scale. Tear the scale to zero. Now we're going to add the flattened out pieces of silver here so we can get a weight on this spoon that we flattened out in the rollers. I've got 58.9. I'm going to break that right on the side of the beaker. 58. 0.9 grams. Okay, now beaker number two. 600 milliliters also. Put it on the scale. Tear the scale to zero. And now we're going to add the fork that we rolled up that we did not flatten out. It weighs 59.4 grams. 59. 4 grams. Alright, now we're ready to start the experiment here. I need to move this reaction down off the heat. That's some silver being dissolved in my uh, nitric acid solutions for my gold refining operations to consume the extra nitric that's in those solutions. Here's beaker number one. Beaker number two, this has got our coiled up piece of silverware in it. This has got our flattened out piece of silverware. Now I'm going to add about uh, 250 milliliters of Ruto Professional Drain Cleaner. This is 93% concentrated sulfuric acid. So we're going to add it right in to, the, uh, to each of the... Uh, spoons here but fill it up to about the 250 milliliter level on each one you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of reaction going on in either one of these that fluid that sulfuric acid is rather viscous now what we're going to do is we're going to move it up here both of them Put them in these small beakers so that we can set them both at the same time side by side up on the heat and now uh, we're just going to let this go just put them on it's 115 we're going to let these things sit and heat up and boil here and dissolve the silver in sulfuric acid it's extremely important to point out that no water should be added to that sulfuric acid. The silver won't dissolve if you do, and you could spatter hot steaming sulfuric acid everywhere. The time is 2.40. These have been on the heat now for an hour and a half each. And they really haven't begun to dissolve really well yet. Something to eat. So uh, I cranked the heat up a little bit. These are still fairly solid. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and let these cook a little while longer and come back and check them in a little while. It's 6 p.m. We've been on here nearly five hours. And our fork, our solid fork is still pretty much intact. Yeah, let's see what we got over here in the uh, thin pieces. Oh yeah, they're, they're uh, not fully dissolved, but they're way further ahead than the, uh, than the fork is. 
can see there's just uh, little pieces left in there now. So spending the time rolling that metal thin as a benefit, as opposed to trying to uh, dissolve the whole fork like this without rolling it. This will eventually go into solution. It's just going to take much longer uh, to get it to dissolve. So we'll just let this on, leave this on, and I'll let it continue to dissolve. This is the following morning after six hours on the heat yesterday. I turned it off and went in, went to bed so I could get some rest. And I turned this back on about 8.30 and the time right now is 10 o'clock. So it's been on for about an hour and a half here. You can see the fork is still pretty much left in a solid piece. And over here, the uh, these pieces have almost all gone into solution now. That's all that's left is those few little pieces of silver there. So that's the benefit of rolling the metal thin before we commit it to the acid here. That's all I got left in there. So in a few more minutes, maybe about an hour, all of this should be in solution and we can proceed from there. The time is about uh, 10 minutes past 11. It's been an hour or so since the last time we checked this. Look down in here. I've got no silver left in the bottom of this beaker, and this acid is boiling fairly vigorously. You gotta really watch it when you got boiling sulfuric acid you're working with here. If any of this stuff gets on you, it will instantly consume your flesh. Uh, the fork is coming along. It's uh, very thin, and I'm just going to leave it on and let it continue to uh, dissolve. Uh, this piece, we're ready to go to the next step, or this beaker number one, we're ready to go to the next step. I'm going to pull beaker number one down off of the heat now. It's completely dissolved, and we're going to let it set right here and cool down a little bit. And I'm going to let beaker number two continue to heat. It's still got some solid material in there that needs to dissolve. And when that dissolves in beaker number two, I've got a filter set up down here with some glass microfiber filters. And we're going to filter out the sulfuric acid solution through the filter into this beaker. We cannot use a paper filter here because the boiling sulfuric acid, or even if it's cold sulfuric acid, would immediately dissolve the paper filter. It's about uh, past 1.30. So I guess it's taken about, uh, we started at 8.30 with this. It's taken about five more hours to get this to completely dissolve. So we're gonna pull this down off the heat. Yep, everything's going into solution now. It just took a while. Turn the heat off. We'll let this cool down and we'll go from here. Well, here we go. I've got our uh, silver solutions over here. What we're gonna do is carefully pour them into one of my micro fiber glass filters. We're going to filter out all of the uh, sediment that's in here. Here we go. Now remember, you can't do this with a uh, paper filter because that acid will just immediately eat right I've through. I've got some uh, long gloves on to make sure I don't get any of this stuff on my skin. Sulfuric acid is bad on human tissue, so you can't get any of this stuff on you. 
know, uh, refining the silver this way as opposed to nitric acid, I think I'd rather just go through the trouble of trying to find some nitric acid rather than using this method as an ongoing way uh, to get my pure silver. It is a way to get silver, but it's very dangerous when you're working with hot sulfuric acid here. What this is, is a uh, combination of silver sulfate and copper sulfate in this solution. And if you look carefully at the side of the beaker here, you'll see there's some silver sulfate crystals coming out of solution as the uh, solution cools on the side of the beaker. Uh, the silver sulfate is soluble in sulfuric acid and so uh, that's the problem with if we let this thing cool all the way down to room temperature we'd have a glass full of silver sulfate crystals all right our uh, beaker here has got some solids down in the bottom what i'm gonna do Remember folks, I'm making this up as I go. I've got some sulfuric acid down here and I'm gonna use sulfuric acid to rinse the crystals and the solids out of this beaker the best I can. Silver sulfate is soluble in sulfuric acid. It's real thick, about like sugar water syrup. All right, I got all most of the solids out of there. I'm gonna set this beaker off in the back, and now we're gonna start. Uh, Filtering the second beaker of dissolved silver and copper here. I've got most of the solution through the filter. I wanted to give you a little demonstration here about how this stuff does on paper. It's a drop of sulfuric acid going onto a piece of paper towel. And what happens is, as you can see, it immediately dissolves the paper. That's why we cannot use paper filters for this operation. And uh, now what I'm gonna do, if you look at the glass, I've got a bunch of uh, crystals forming. That's silver sulfate coming out of solution as the, uh, as the solution cools on the sides of the beaker. Uh, it is soluble in sulfuric acid so I can rinse the inside of the beaker with some uh, sulfuric acid and dissolve those crystals and get them into this uh, filter here. I'm trying to get all the solids rinsed out of the bottom of the beaker. The joys of refining. Okay, I've almost got just about all of our solids down into this funnel. I'm rinsing with sulfuric acid. Cannot rinse with water uh, because we're dealing with sulfuric acid here. Water will react with the sulfuric acid. Well, not really react. It'll heat up and turn to steam so fast that it will spatter hot acid everywhere. So you cannot get, you gotta keep water completely and utterly away from the sulfuric acid solution here. All right, that should do it. I think I pretty much got everything out of this beaker. And, uh, we're ready to go to the next step. Now we're going to convert the silver sulfate solution 
to uh, silver chloride with hydrochloric acid. Here we go. This up here. And I've got some hydrochloric acid here. Uh, this is going to be a solution of silver sulfate and copper sulfate. And we can get the copper out of there by adding hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid will convert the silver sulfate to silver chloride, but it shouldn't create a complex with the uh, copper. The copper should stay in solution. So we're gonna add this real slow. We might get some spattering here. There we go, a little bit of hydrochloric acid going in see the uh, silver chloride forms immediately it's causing the solution to boil give it a quick stir here don't look like any silver chloride we've ever seen does it but you'll see in a minute it'll clean up it'll clear up it looks brown but uh, it will uh, turn nice and white here in a second Silver chloride conversion with hydrochloric acid in a silver sulfate solution. Oh boy, what a mess. If you notice the uh, the experiment is starting to uh, form a layer, looks like a parfait there, and I'm kind of uh, freaking out a little bit here. You got to remember, I'm kind of making this up as I go. This is a larger amount than I had in uh, the experiment that I tried before I made the video, so I'm kind of uh, playing it by the seat of my pants here. bit of tap water here as I stir and it causes the uh, brown color to go away I'm not quite sure what's going on here but it cleans the uh, silver chloride up for me All right, here's our silver chloride came out pretty good still looks a little brown I'm going to add a little bit more hydrochloric acid here, see if we get any more silver chloride to precipitate, and you can see it does not. So all the silver now has been converted from silver sulfate to silver chloride. Add a little bit more tap water here. Alright, our next step is to rinse all this uh, copper off of our silver chloride now down at the bottom now I'm gonna pour off the copper solution into a waste bucket down here this is a waste bucket that I've used before it's got a little bit of silver chloride the last time I did this I'm just gonna pour off the waste solution into this waste bucket and then now we're going to take, I forgot to point the camera down at the waste bucket. This is just a waste bucket from the last time I did this silver chloride conversion. Now what we're going to do is uh, rinse our silver chloride with hot tap water over and over until we get all of the uh, blue liquid rinsed off of our silver chloride. Rinsing with hot tap water over and over is the most efficient way I've found to do this. Uh, it's better to use many small rinses rather than larger rinses. It seems like the, uh, the blue liquid comes off better 
when you do a whole bunch of small rinses. That's one pitcher of water that I went through. There's the second pitcher that I'm starting now. That'll be two pitchers of water that I've used to do these multiple rinses. Now what we're gonna do is test some of the wash water in the presence of copper. I'm gonna pour some of the rinse water into this clean beaker. And then we're gonna take some regular old household ammonia. 10% ammonia. And I'm gonna get a little bit in this dropper. I'm gonna put it in this sample. This is a sensitive, very sensitive test for copper in solution. I got copper in here, this will turn blue. I see just a shade, slight touch of blue there. See that? So that tells me I got a little bit more rinsing to do. Okay, I had three pitchers of water, hot tap water, used to rinse off our silver chloride. Here's my first test with ammonia for the rinse water. I'm gonna get another sample out of here now. We're gonna do another ammonia test. And this is just regular old household ammonia that you use to clean windows with or whatever. And we're gonna add it to our sample and see if we still got copper present. I think we got just about every bit of copper rinsed out of our silver chloride now. So what we have in this beaker is a nice, clean, fluffy, white silver chloride cleaned up free of, free of the copper. We've rinsed the copper out, so we've produced a separation uh, of copper and silver. All the silver's here. All the copper that we took out is down there in our waste bucket, rinsed out of the silver chloride. So now we're going to do a conversion to pure silver metal with lye and sugar. I've got some household lye here, drain opener. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add this lye, which is sodium hydroxide our silver chloride in here. We're going to convert the silver chloride to silver oxide with this lye. I'm going to stir it up now. I've got a uh, handheld blender here. I've got a little blade on the bottom. This thing works perfect for mixing up our uh, experiment here. Here we go. I think we pretty much got it. First shot there. Looking for a black colored solid in our beaker. That's kind of a little bit gray looking. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the lye to this. See if we can get it to turn black. so far and uh, it doesn't quite look 
bright to me here. It's still looking a little bit of a gray color. So I'm gonna add a little bit more lye to this. Now I've got about three quarters of our uh, container in here. We'll stir it up a little bit more now. Here we go. That's what we wanna see. That's a nice black conversion to silver oxide. That's black silver oxide. That's the color we wanna see. So this took about three quarters of a pound of lye for this amount of silver chloride. That's looking real good there now. I've got some table sugar here, just a little bit. We're gonna add this slowly. This produces a very exothermic reaction. It, uh, if you add the sugar too fast here, you could experience a runaway boiling reaction. And it'll spatter hot silver and lie everywhere. I'm gonna stir this up a little bit. You see the reaction taking place on top, we're converting our uh, silver oxide to pure elemental silver metal. You see the silver starting to form down at the bottom of the beaker. sugar here. Still got to be wary of a boil over. If we add too much sugar at once, it could react violently. See it boiling down there? See that? Here we go. That's all heat generated just from this reaction why you gotta watch out pouring that sugar in. Otherwise this thing could spew out like a volcano. All right, I'm gonna add just a touch more granulated sugar here. Just a little bit more. I think we're, uh, I think we're complete here. You can see the cement silver down in the bottom of the beaker. I say cement silver because it looks like cement silver. It's uh, pure silver powder. Three nines fine silver, high purity silver down there. And uh, what we'll do next is we'll rinse all of the lion sugar off of here. And we'll get this into a melt dish and melt us up a nice pure silver bar. This is looking real good. This will conclude part one of the uh, video where we're making a pure silver bar out of two sterling silver forks using no nitric acid and uh, in part two what we'll do is we'll get all the lye and sugar rinsed off of our pure uh, silver powder out of that beaker out there that should be some very high purity silver we got all the copper rinsed out of it and all the other metals are gone and all we had left was that pure white fluffy silver chloride and once we convert that to pure silver metal we should have some nice three nines fine silver. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Mark and Carla. We are under contract 
for this nice pure gold bar that we uh, refined in a previous video for Troy ounces uh, congratulations to them folks Mark and Carla thank you very much and also I'd like to uh, uh, put this bar up for sale this is a bar that uh, we produced for the intro video for this series and uh, it's about uh, one and a half tray ounces of three nines fine silver it does have a little bit of uh, imperfections in the surface from the outgassing when I melted the bar I was using oxyacetylene the metal absorbs oxygen and then spits it back out when it uh, freezes and that's what created the irregularities on the surface of this bar but I'm going to stamp it three tips and stamp the weight on it 999 fine silver and we'll offer this on my eBay store for sale okay that will conclude part one of the sterling silver fork refining thanks for watching